All right, I'm back. I have the LEDs in backwards. It just goes to show you that when they're backwards, nothing happens. So let's go to, we're at one volt right now. There's two, the red one's lighting up. 2.1, 2.2, you can see it's getting brighter each time up the voltage. 2.3, uh oh, it's not liking that 2.3. She's burned up, 2.4, 2.5, I can smell her burning. She smoked. 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2 2.9, and the white one's lit up. So let's go to three volts. There's three, four, five, six. Well, not six volts, sorry, 3.7, 3.8, 3. No, that's six, seven, 3.8, 3.9. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just start going four, five, six. There's four. See, she gets brighter. Five. Now we're overdriving it. There's too many electrons going through there. We're starting to eat up the LED. Six. She burned. And I can keep turning the voltage up and nothing's going to happen. You can also notice when I turn the voltage back down, nothing happens. Now, the reason I did this is to show you guys what happens when you overdrive an LED circuit. Sorry, camera's, the tripod's a little stiff. Just want to show you guys what happens when you overdrive an LED circuit. You can burn them up. Too many electrons, they burn up. All right? Now, having said that, I only got a little bit more to deal with, to talk about. I don't even want to touch those. I know they're hot. Okay? Next thing we're going to talk about are different kinds of LEDs. You saw the 10 millimeter earlier. We're going to zoom in on this so you guys can see them up a little bit closer. You saw the 10 millimeter earlier. What we have next to it now, oh my camera, what we have next to it now is a 5 millimeter, half the size, okay? Now, this is a 5 millimeter flat top. Interesting, right? And this little guy here is a 3 millimeter. They come in many, many other sizes than that. Um... They come probably any size you want. They come much smaller than that, too. There's one millimeter LEDs. They're so small, you, you, you need a microscope to work with them, and it's almost you need a machine to solder them. All right. They're, that's too small. Now, where can you get LEDs? I would not go to the big chain electronics store you can find everywhere that sells mainly cell phones these days. The reason I wouldn't go there, they're going to charge three bucks for two of these. Ooh, this one's burned up. Well, anyhow, I would go to eBay and look on eBay. Reason I say that is you can get on eBay, type LED, 5 millimeter, hit buy it now. Don't bid on an auction, hit buy it now. And you'll find some Chinese guys who are selling these things. They're going to have feedback in the 10 or 15,000 range, all positive. So they, they do what they say they're going to do. And they're going to sell you 50 LEDs for 6 bucks or $4. And these LEDs come with the resistors. You just tell them the voltage you plan on using them for. They include the proper resistors for those LEDs. So if you plan on building nothing but 12 volts, you're great. You just tell them 12 volts. They send you resistors for 12 volts. They send you the LEDs. They come in a package like this. Resistors there. LEDs at the bottom. That says UV on it because these are ultraviolet LEDs. Why do I have ultraviolet LEDs? I have some glow-in-the-dark models. Put these in the glow-in-the-dark models, you don't need a black light to get them lit. They will glow beautifully at night. Okay? Another thing I get off eBay, capacitors. We're going to talk about these more later. But there's some really big capacitors right there. Those two big-ass capacitors right there will cost me as at an electronics store more than this bag of 300 capacitors of various types cost me on eBay. I know they're coming from China and I'm not advocating you know doing away with your basic local hobby electronics store. Not at all. My little local electronics store he will sell me LEDs for 50 cents a piece. Not what I'm getting them for on eBay. On eBay I pay seven to eight cents a piece for him. But he's still far cheaper than the local big box store. You know, so it doesn't hurt to go looking there. But anyhow, I've only got one more thing to talk about here. 
and I'm going to talk about that more later in other videos, is one of the problems with LEDs is they put hot spots on your models. If you go back to the very beginning of this, you will see a photo that shows how to deal with hot spots somewhat with LEDs. You just file the crud out of them. Let's zoom in on this guy a little bit better. All right. Now you can see there's some metal bits inside this LED. There's a big dome over the top of it. That dome is to focus the light from the LED straight up. Okay, so you get a nice spot. It doesn't disperse the light from the LED. Now this flat top LED here does a better job of dispersing the light. Much better job of dispersing the light. Okay, because it doesn't have a round dome on the top. It has a dimple going in inside. But if you take your LEDs and file them, and you can file them down to the point that all you see in there is the metal parts. As long as you don't file into the metal, this thing's going to be good. You can make a triangle shape out of it, and that causes the light to go everywhere. And opaquing the LEDs by lightly frosting them helps too. All right, We're going to talk about that more later, once I actually start building the Millennium Falcon. In fact, we're going to talk about a lot of lighting techniques while I'm building the Millennium Falcon. These are just intro videos to get you guys up to speed on a lot of different components. Well, I'm going to quit here. This has been a long enough video as it is. I'm going to have to break her in two parts, I'm pretty sure. Um, up next, I'm either going to do the soldering video or I'm going to do a LED light strips versus compact fluorescence used in computers. So we'll, we will talk about that. That video will be up in a day or two. Have a good weekend. All right, everyone. I've got my series circuit set up. What series means is this. I'm going to put a picture of it up for you guys to see. It means we've connected one positive to one negative. The next positive to the next negative. Next positive to this next negative. They're in a straight line chain. Okay? And the advantage of this is I'm running eight volts right here. And they're bright. Now I'm not going to crank it up above 8 because I think that's a little too much voltage. I can run a higher voltage without resistors because each one of these is consuming so much of the current that overall they don't see a high current each. In other words, the resistances add up for each LED. And the V equals IR, we have the resistance up high enough that the V can go up a bit to get them lit. Okay? Now, here's the bad part. If I take one of these out of the chain, say one burns up, what happens? Whole thing dies. This is why I don't like using series. Something happens to somewhere in the circuit, whole thing just shuts down. Okay? Whole thing just shuts down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up in parallel. Alright? Parallel means all the positives are hooked together all the negatives are hooked together alright which is some fun stuff there now I almost got her set up now I've got her set up in parallel all the positives are together all the negatives are together now I have to change the voltage on my voltmeter down from 9 to 3 turn it on and they're lit okay now here's the fun part. If I reach in here and grab one of these and pull it out, it doesn't affect the other ones. So if something happens to your LED and it burns up, parallel is the way to go. The problem with parallel though is you have to use a resistor on each LED. You can probably get away with using one resistor, but I advise against it. The resistors are so stinking cheap, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and use them. That's what they're for. Okay? Now, the only thing I got left to talk about is where do you get your LEDs? So let me reposition the camera and we'll talk about that. Hello everyone. This is a short segment on LEDs. Now, what we have here, I'm just using this as an intro to LEDs. What we have here is a timing chip. And you can tell I can play with the blink rates on these guys. I can alter the blink rates. Okay. This one timing chip is powering seven different LEDs. And I'm going to pick it up so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay. 
You can see different blank rates going off on there. Some of the LEDs are brighter than others. Some are much larger than others. I've got about five different kinds of LEDs there. So you guys can see it. I'm playing with the blink rate right now. All right. So you guys can see if I were to want to get a bunch of different blinking lights in, say, the cockpit of a model, I could use this chip for that. And again, we're going to discuss about this in a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is cut off my power supply so that'll go off and we'll start talking about LEDs and what's going on with them. Let me get some light in here and I'll be back in a minute. 